Hello, this is Keith Hill and I'm with Home Run Automation. Today's video is going to explain how to set up an E5C series controller using on-off control. On the front of the unit we have several keys. The first key on our left is our level key which is just a circle. Um, the level key allows you to go and advance from one level to the other for programming purposes. The next key over is a circle with an arrow on it. That's our mode key. Once you're in a particular level, using the mode key will advance you from one parameter to the next. The next one over uh, to the right is our programmable function key. You can program this to do various different things, but by default it is set up as the shift key, which when changing a parameter will allow you to shift each digit. Every time you press it, it will shift the digit so that you can get to like the tens key, a hundreds digit, and then increment just the hundreds uh, digit to uh, speed up your actual changing of values. The next key to the right is our down arrow, which will decrement your value. The next key to the, uh, to the right is the up arrow, which will allow you to increment the value. Now on the level key, the level key can do several different things depending on how long you hold it in for. If I just go and tap on the level key, that will get me into my adjustment level. And if I tap it once again, I will be back at our operation level, which is the default level. If I go in and hold this for three seconds, the level key, the display will flash and it will bring me into our initial setting level. Anytime that we go into the initial setting level, that's where the main setup of the unit is. So we do need to be careful when we go into that mode because it will stop the outputs. Uh, from controlling the application. Uh, the reason for that is is we're doing drastic changes to the unit and we want to make sure that we are not affecting the application so we turn our outputs off in this case. Once we go back in to the operation level and we do that by holding the level key for three seconds, so three seconds to get in, three seconds to get back out, we get into the uh, operation level and then our outputs are controlling once again. So in order to do the setup, all of the setup keys for this application will be done in the initial setting level except for one which is our hysteresis value. We can adjust that on the fly and that will be in the uh, adjustment level. So to get into the initial setting level, once again we're going to hold the level key for three seconds. Our outputs turn off and our very first parameter is INIT. This is our input type. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to determine the type of input we're going to be providing to the unit, whether it be a thermal couple, RTD, or an analog input. By default, the unit is set up for a value of 5. Now with the instruction sheets that are sent with the unit or the data sheet, or the user manual, there will be a uh, table that will show you the various different types of inputs that we can apply to this unit. Now each different input will have a number based on that type. Uh, on the thermocouples and RTDs, there are various different numbers uh, available. So like for a K-type thermocouple, we'll give you two different values, either a, t a value of 5 or a value of 6. A value of 5 will give you whole numbers when you're in the operation level for your process value. A, va uh, a value of 6 will give you one decimal place. So that's how you're, you're able to get a little bit finer resolution. Now in this case, since I'm going to keep it as a default, um, I, I am using a case style thermocouple for this application, so I will leave it as a default of 5. To get to our next parameter, I'm going to tap on our mode key, which will bring us to our D-U parameter. So this is the degrees unit parameter. 
Now in this case, I'm going to set it up for degrees Fahrenheit. If I want to show degrees Celsius, I would just leave it in C. But in this case, I want to do Fahrenheit. So I'm going to use my up arrow to select F for Fahrenheit. You'll see the display flashed. That's actually saving that parameter during that flashing period. Once I get to the next parameter, I just go and tap on the mode key once. My next parameter is SL-H. This is the set point limit high. So whatever I have programmed down here will be what I'll be able to increment my set point to when I'm in the operation level. So this gives you a little bit of a deg uh, degree of protection so that your operator won't increment the set point past what you want them to. So for this application, I'm going to set this up to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. So I can use my PF key to increment over to my thousandths digit, use my down arrow. I can then go to my hundredths and I'll do 175. You should do them from right to left. Oop. There we go. So I have 175 degrees. I'm going to go and tap on the mode key one more time until I get to my SL L. This is my set point low limit. So in this case, since I'm just going to be doing a heating application, I'm going to go and I'm going to increment this up to zero. So my actual set point range is going to be 0 to 175 degrees. So I'm going to go in this case I'm just going to go and use the up arrow key and I'll set this to be 0. Okay, now that I have that set I'll go to my next parameter by tapping the mode key our next parameter is CNTL, and this is where I choose the type of control I'm going to be doing. For this video, I'm showing you how to do on-off, so I can leave it there, but if I do choose to do PID, I can increment this to PCD or PID, and then I'll have it set up for uh, PID control. But in this case, this application is going to be just showing on-off control. So I'm going to tap on my mode key one more time to get to my next parameter, which is standard or heating and cooling. <clears throat> if I had an application to where I was going to do heating and cooling, I would need, and this is heating and cooling, I would need to change this by using the up arrow to do heating and cooling. But since this is only a heating application, I'm going to keep this in the standard operation. I'm going to go and I'm going to tap on the mode key one more time. My next parameter is pattern. If I choose to have in my application that I ramp up to a specific set point and I want to hold it for X amount of time, say like I'm baking bread or something like that, I can set the pattern to be in the on condition. But in this case, I don't want to have my heat set for a period of time, so I'm just going to keep this in the off condition. I'm going to go and tap on the mode key one more time to get to my next parameter, which is OREV. So this is either reverse or direct operation. Now with this parameter, if I'm doing heating only, I want to make sure I keep this in OR-R. If I was going to use this for a cooling application only, I would then increment this value so that it goes to OR-D. So OR-D is for cooling only. OR-R is for heating only. So in this case, it is a heater. I will leave it in OR-R. I'm going to go and tap on the mode key one more time and this will get me to my alarm parameters. This is the alarm type 
for uh, it's the alarm type for alarm one. So in the manual there are various different alarm types that you can use for the application. Uh, we'll have another video showing that later on. So for now I'm just going to go and I'm going to disable all my alarms. In order to disable the alarms I do need to set this to a value of zero. So I'll do this for alarm type one. I'll tap on the mode key one more time. I'll also set alarm type 2 to 0 and I'll tap on the mode key one more time and I'll set my alarm type 3 to 0. So for this particular unit I have three different alarm outputs and setting it to 0 if you're not using them it eliminates any other indications on the unit when you're in the operation mode so that would confuse the operator. So it's better off if you're not using the alarms to turn them off and as simple as just setting it to zero. I'll tap on the mode key one more time and you'll notice I'm back up to my input type parameter. So as you're in the initial setting level it'll be a circular type of pattern every time I go and I tap on the mode key. So I just can keep on going, I'll tap through all of them and I'm still in that initial setting level. To get back out of the initial setting level, I just go and hold the level key for three seconds. My whole display will light up, and then I'll be back into the operation level. Once I'm in the operation level, I did also want to set a hysteresis value of five degrees. The reason for that is it allows so that when you're around set point your output doesn't chatter on and off, on and off. So I'm going to go and enter in a, a, a value of 5 degrees for this. Now that's found in our, um, uh, our adjustment level. So in order to get into the adjustment level I just have to tap on my level key once. That will get me into my adjustment level and then I'm going to go and tap on the mode key several times until I get to my HYS parameter. Now hysteresis will only show up when you're in on off control. You do not have a hysteresis value when you're in the PID control. So here it's set for 1.0. I'm going to increment this up to 5.0 so I get 5 degrees of hysteresis. So what's going to happen is, is if I set my set point for 100, I will allow the system to cool down to 95 degrees before I turn my output back on. Now to get out of my adjustment level, I'm going to just tap on the level key, and now I'm back in my operation level, where it's showing me my process value and my set point. So if I try to decrement, I won't be able to go lower than zero because I set my SL-L parameter to zero. If I decrement or increment all the way up as high as it will go, it should stop at 175 and it won't let me increment past 175, which is my set point limit high value. So I'm going to set this down to 100 degrees. You'll see my output has turned on and I'm starting to increment my process value. In a heating application, if you see your process value going down when your heater is turned on, that's a good indication on a thermocouple input type that you have your thermocouple wired uh, backwards. So you just need to flip those two wires. But you'll see that my output did turn off when I reached 100 degrees it'll allow the system to go down to 95 degrees and then turn the output back on and then bring it back up to 100 degrees so we'll give it a couple seconds here and you'll notice that when we hit 195 degrees our output comes back on turns our heater back on and then we'll go up to 100 degrees and it'll turn back off. 
So this demonstrates how to set up the E5 C series and on off control for a heating application. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.